Next up, we have Rahim Black on tokenization, representing Mosaico. Rahim, please join me on the stage. You've been ready for the last 20 minutes, I'm sure. Let's welcome Rahim with a round of applause. Why should the world need tokenization today? This is a bond to security from the uh, from, um, uh, from 19, uh, 20th century, and this is a document we still people still work with in order to sell the transactions. Uh, lawyers, we spend thousands of uh, lotis on lawyers on their support. Uh, we have to go physically to offices, to courts, to the tax authorities. It's history. Everything is missing is Russian tanks, I think, and these are two institutions. Uh, all business people love these are court records and property records. Why does it take three months to change everything, anything in these records? Why does it take eight or months, nine months uh, to uh, change something in the property records? And these are not complicated instruments. Why don't we use software instead? Why don't we have digital securities or bonds? Uh, if we were to use a digital world and if we use a digital file based on databases it would have one disadvantage it would be very easy to uh, copy so it would be uh, value less so that's why we need an intermediary a trusted institution if we use a token if we use a sequence of digits uh, produced by a smart contract we will create a, um, a smart asset which cannot be copied or false Thanks to smart contracts, so we now have the opportunity uh, to program a life cycle for an asset too. I would like uh, to pay tribute to this guy who created such a token in 2014 and solved the problem of double spending of such a token and also the possibility to transfer a file from place A to place 2 and also a possibility to check its correctness thanks to a generally available service or something we refer to as blockchain today. Unfortunately, he died in 2014. Uh, he was a man who mined the first Bitcoin after Satoshi Nakamoto. So, uh, uh, of course, we can't talk to him about it to confirm it because he died. Tokenization brings together different elements. It uses a distributed database. We use uh, uh, an engineer to, to program a smart contract. Uh, it brings together game theory and cryptography too. What, how can, uh, what can, what purposes can tokenization serve today? It's a valuable form of obtaining capital because it is based on blockchain technology. It found its application in such uh, sequences of words as ICO, IEO, STO, IDO. It's basically the same thing, um, but we use different abbreviations. Uh, I think it all boils down to the same thing. I believe that tokenization can be used in a classical equity crowdfunding too. It is also freedom-based, community-based way of fundraising in unorganized um, way we can say right now the existing solutions are not organized but uh uh, let's com uh, com uh, compare equity crowdfunding to tokenization. Equity crowdfunding hasn't offered anything in terms of digital assets um, um, and cannot be traded on an exchange. The difference between tokenization and equity uh, stock uh, um, crowdfunding is as follows. A token can have different functions. It doesn't have to be just, it doesn't have to represent just a share in a company. So, because we have all sorts, NFTs, uh, DeFi governance, security tokens, etc., etc. So, tokenization is not only based on technology, but also requires in imagination in creating innovative investment products. So, equity crowdfunding uh, has no chance of winning against tokenization. What we offer here is digital property rights that can be prop uh, traded on a, a stock exchange and it can replace a low public institution. 
institutions uh, with, um, uh, with a technology that is, that is trusted by the public. So we use tokenization in a classic crowdfunding to make it more organized because crowdfunding is unorganized. Uh, this leads me to an important question. Can you tokenize traditional businesses? Because unfortunately, traditional business cannot be programmed using smart contracts because uh, you uh, make sure that Janusz Palikot will use um, put this half a liter of vodka in the barrel as he promised in his um, in his project. But if you can drink, the, if you can burn the token, you can use the token, you can use it. It increases security. You can use a discount in a store, for example, and then you know that you have burned the token rather than consuming half a liter of vodka that Palikot promised in his project. And of course, you can exchange the token on Kanga Exchange or in the other book you can offer it for sale. So we are talking about a le higher level of organization of this unorganized crowdfunding uh, sphere we are using technology uh, tokenization of uh, vineyards in Tuscany uh, one uh, square meter of vineyard uh, staking wine that can be uh, also uh, drunk actually there uh, tokenization of renewable energy sources. Uh, we ask ourselves a very interesting question at the beginning of my journey with tokenization. A client came and told me, tokenize for me um, a company uh, that uh, runs a um, um, PV farm. And I said, uh, why a company? We don't need uh, a company. Uh, let's tokenize the meat, the core of this business. And the core of this business are PV panels. Uh, so these modules that generate energy one total is one watt of a peak um, energy producing power which stakes one kilowatt hour per year this is how a PV panel works in practice so in connection uh, so this the rip derived derivative token we can say can be sold uh, in an exchange can be stored or we can use it to pay uh, for energy um, uh, to, uh, to to charge um, uh, the battery of, of our e uh, vehicle so there are many applications the same applies to staking CBD uh, one square meter of land that produces um, um, uh, CBD extract that can be then translated into the product or sold on an exchange at the price that the market will suggest for CBD extract. But we can also do a bet on THC if you want to uh, make more money and if you are prepared uh, um, to, to, to take risk, you can wait until uh, THC is legal. If it is made legal, you will make more money. I always, I always wanted to tokenize trees and uh, work of art. I don't know why, but it just came to me. I've always wanted to tokenize trees and I talked to, uh, to companies that plant trees and one plant, one token, it grows its a tree and then you stake it and then you make money on wood and then, and then replace it and, then, and it stores CO2 as, as wood and then you can make furniture of it. But you can also stake it and then um, uh, you get green certificates and NFT and then you can uh, publish this information about your um, and sustainability commitment of your company. So tokenization would be a great uh, instrument here. We have also tokenized bees. They stake honey. And this brings me to the question, can you tokenize art? NFT in art. We all know what NFT in art is, but has anyone made the effort uh, to ask how this technology can contribute to the world? ARC uh, 721. This is a picture uh, by, by, by Bekszynski. Uh, his uh, descendants uh, have a, a legal company, and what do they do? They actually persecute those who sell uh, pictures by Bekszynski on the art market, because when you sell 
sell a work of art, whatever work of, of art it is, it is IP. So it, it has its material value, but there is IP to it as well. There's the brand of the author that you cannot sell, but uh, you can inherit it. Uh, so initially, this project was about sharing the commissions from the secondary market in a pre-programmed way. So if all the transactions run through crypto or in a decentralized wallet, so that in every following transaction, these 10 or 5 percent go back to the author who created the work of art, because uh, this work of art not only has a material value, but also an additional value that uh, comes uh, from the, um, the fact that this author is known and recognized on the market. Unfortunately, most uh, tokens now on the market uh, neglect this technology. I'm thinking about the NFT uh, technology, and I think it is some sort of cover uh, in uh, order to move further away from regulators. Uh, I studied art, and uh, the rule we believe in is you can do everything in art, and everything is allowed in art. So it's really difficult uh, to criticize art, um, and sometimes art projects that uh, are very similar to financial pro uh, pro um, instruments. Uh, with Sławek Zawadzki, some, uh, some time ago, we thought whether or not it's possible to tokenize everything, and we concluded that there is one thing we cannot tokenize, it is law for my wife. But people can be tokenized, sapiens, you can, uh, for example, split a human person into 21 million pieces and tokenize them and sell them. Is it legal? It remains to be answered, and the answer is not going to be it's going to be very ambivalent because each and every domain has its supervisory bodies. Uh, with uh, financial market supervision authority or copyright authorities, um, competition authorities, etc. But in this very list, this battle of against crowdfunding, and there is one advantage by equity crowdfunding, that is, if it is to uh, issue shares, and on the other side we've got tokens that are issued, so either shares or tokens, then shares are backed by something else, and this something else is um, the um, company's code, a book where various scenarios are scripted. If somebody is not, uh, um, is not going to take part in the uh, general assembly of the company, then whether a letter has been received or not received, etc., etc. So uh, this is something of a traditional mode. And what do we say under such circumstances in the world of tokenization? Is there any answer? Is there any argument that we can uh, that we can raise? We've got the AO, decentralized autonomous organizations, corporations, the AO or DOC, you name it, you have it. And definitely question why do we have this kind of uh, uh, tokens? STO uh, is now very much hyped. We've got this security financial instrument. Why uh, should be the case now, thanks to uh, the um, capital company's code, make you disregard this old system. And we want this, uh, because uh, growth is what we mean. Because growth is our primary motivator. So let's leave STO behind, DAO or DAC are now progressing. As a tokenizer, you do not only invest passively in a token, you can control it in an active mode. DAO means a smart contract with, an, with a wallet, whereby each and every drone capital is seen to tokenize it. Should all these transactions happen in cryptocurrencies, then we'd see even more clearly in this transparent book of uh, uh, this uh, register uh, what goes on with our money. We can stop somebody who spends money on goals others then agreed. So, not all the investment products can be programmed uh, 
o predefined. Davies and financial products can be programmed, but startups are far from this because startups are more than characterized by volatility. Should we want to change something, should we want to go for a pivot, we need to go for um, an assembly of tokenizers who may vote, but this is not as 5,000 uh, legal employees of Samsung, people of, from all across the globe gather to vote as they once did for presidents. Here you can vote like you ride a bike, you ride in bike, you've got a watch, uh, and so you vote. And in the meantime, not like me flying to South Korea, I invest loads of energy, loads of time, and yeah, this is very much about technology. And now you can work thanks to various programs. So instead of instead of uh, job contracts, you, you can ha you, you can stay flexible. This is what Mosaico is about, because Mosaico does not plan to fundraising campaigns without DAO in place where each and every participant sees what money is spent on, what our customers uh, say. Uh, you know, over the moon uh, that uh, custom uh, that uh, it will be seen what they do with money, but I'm here to change the world for the better. Uh, IDEO, uh, initial desk offering, initiation. That's at the core. No. And then we've got DAO that precedes it. You have to make one step back and uh, have a company. So DEX, which is this decentralized stock exchanges, uh, you set up a company and you go to the secondary market, and this is not to be guaranteed by any other solutions that are there on the market. Why does the world need tokenization? Why? It is because there is no digitization without tokenization, there are no digital assets without tokenization, because it is more fair clear, more transparent to investors in the first place. In the second place, for issuers, it is better. And technology should be there for the world to be more productive. Let's eliminate all intermediary institutions wherever we can, wherever it is possible. We mustn't eliminate them whatsoever. We mustn't eliminate courts, but we may eliminate the register of marriages, if, even if we don't manage to eliminate uh, the courts that uh, settle uh, divorces. Mm, we can eliminate um, uh, like registers of uh, companies because it doesn't uh, the situation mustn't be like that. It will wait eight months for uh, for the entry into the registry. And we speak about decentralization, inspections, courts etc. Let's get rid of it. Mm, callings, uh, announcements. Do we want this world to look like this? Do we want the world for us all to be afraid, to be concerned, to be under stress, to be getting letters? Fuck the old system off. Fuck the old system off. Progress is the highest right. And fuck, fuck Putin. Less demagogy, less rhetoric, more technology, less power, less rhetoric, more decentralized technology will uh, break this system off. May uh, la libertà. Long live the freedom. You've been a splendid audience. Black in black. Mosaico.